SeaWorld is a nationally loved theme park that's been thrown into the public eye for less than desirable reasons. A true view into the park's treatment of its animals. The park, other than having water-based rides, has shows that include trained animals and exhibits showing animals in their natural habitat, quote unquote. On the outside, it all looks very sweet, but behind the scenes, the way the animals are treated has surfaced, and people are outraged. Check out these five things SeaWorld is hiding from you. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified every day for more amazing content. With that being said, let's begin. Number 5. SeaWorld Employees Are Advised to Lie The animals that are kept at SeaWorld are obviously not in their natural habitat, despite having their surroundings look very similar. These animals are not meant to be in a confined area, being looked at by millions of people each year. SeaWorld employees are given a scripted explanation to give whenever an animal isn't behaving the way it should be, so as to make sure the audience is not concerned, basically lying to the visitors. Just like in any form of training, giving rewards to the animal as a way to condition their behavior is a classic move. At SeaWorld, however, they take that notion to a whole new level. Trainers are instructed to starve orcas if they do not perform well, and do the exact opposite when they do so as to teach them the proper way to behave in front of the audience in a show. This form of training is unacceptable to proper trainers worldwide, so when this came out, you can only imagine how people felt. The thing is, an orca's lifespan is much shorter in captivity, and this compounds the cruel treatment of being starved. Male orca whales have a life expectancy of 60 to 70 years in the wild, where the females can live up to 100 years. In captivity, however, their life expectancy drops dramatically to only 13 years. If that's any indication of the fact that they're not meant to live in those conditions and therefore should not be there in the first place, we don't know what is. Their deaths in SeaWorld is announced to the public, but their life expectancy, in fact, is always hidden. And if you see an orca with a collapsed dorsal fin, it means that the whale is unhealthy. SeaWorld is trained to say that the bent fin is normal, but that is an outright lie on their behalf. Nearly all of the orca whales in captivity have this condition, clearly marking their displeasure at being held against their natural state. Orca whales are meant to be swimming in very large oceans, interacting with other whales of their kind. When they're in captivity, though, they behave differently, and as such, you see their worn teeth from constantly chewing on the metal cage they're put in, or see them floating about the tank with no purpose. They are known to be a danger to humans, for this reason exactly. They are not meant to be held by them. One of the most kept secrets at SeaWorld is the fact that the trainers and the staff hide from the guests how smart and intelligent these killer whales really are. It might come as a surprise, but the orcas actually have the second biggest brains when compared to other mammals. Their intellectual skills are so advanced, and they include teaching their calves how to imitate other animals, and they can pick up on different dialects easily. Their emotional intelligence is also amongst the highest. Number 4. The Orca Suffer Sunburn and Small Tanks Damage Their Health Orca whales in nature go deeper into the water when the sun's in full force because their skin is rather sensitive. In their tanks at SeaWorld, they don't have the option of going deeper into the water, at least not deep enough to shield themselves. In order to not freak out the visitors and have them ask questions about the whale's unusual look, the park's trainers put black zinc oxide on the whale's skin to cover up the burns. And the tanks these whales are in are small. The average tank size at SeaWorld that holds performing orcas are about 350 feet long, or one-seventh of a mile. The stifling size of the tank eliminates nearly half of the swimming activity an orca would complete in the wild, which is essential to their health. These tanks might as well be kiddie swimming pools compared to some of these whales. The lack of space in these tanks often contributed to the collapse of the whale's dorsal fins, which is not a common aging effect of the wild orca. In the past, SeaWorld has insisted that a collapsed dorsal fin is a natural occurrence in the life of an orca, but in actuality, the result of a damaged fin is the scientific symptom of an unhealthy or malnourished whale. It isn't just the size of SeaWorld's tanks that induce severe health hazards to the captured whales. In 2012, an orca named Nakai at the San Diego Park was injured by a sharp metal edge inside of his tank. Nakai was trying to remove himself from an altercation that occurred between two other orcas and was seriously hurt during his attempt to flee from the other aggressive whales. Wild orcas are not violent by nature. 
Those who are held in captivity and in close quarters are likely to fight and injure one another. Orcas in captivity are already subjected to an unhealthy diet that contradicts the nutrients and supplements they would consume if they were living in the wild. Unfortunately, thawed, dead fish aren't the biggest threat that's entering the body of a SeaWorld whale. If a trainer is unable to get a rowdy or overly excited orca under control, they force-feed them sedative drugs to put them under. These drugs usually include benzos, antipsychotics, and at times, contraceptives. These types of medication are foreign to the physiology of a whale and therefore should not be used. Also, the chlorine levels in the tank water at SeaWorld have been known to affect the physical health of the orcas. The spikes of chlorine in tanks are so high that they've produced mucus streams from their eyes, caused the skins on their backs and head to peel off, and they're more likely to develop eyesight problems. Good gosh darn work, SeaWorld. Number three, trainers are performers and are in danger at the same time. SeaWorld is dealing with a very large animal in a very irregular surrounding. As such, trainers that are around this animal are in constant danger. According to the corporate incident reports, there were more than 200 serious injuries sustained by SeaWorld trainers. The damage an orca whale can do to a human one-eighth its size is immeasurable. The injuries vary from bites to bruises to much more serious situations of internal bleeding and, as we know, death. Visitors are encouraged to believe that the SeaWorld trainers are professional marine biologists due to their amount of knowledge of the animal. That is, in fact, totally wrong. Trainers at SeaWorld are nothing more than performers and have no academic knowledge or otherwise about their show's animal. Their purpose is to entertain the crowd and keep them as happy as can be so they continue to flow through the gates. Most of the trainers know nothing of the intricate life form in front of them. In early 2016, Tillicum, the orca who killed several trainers, was diagnosed with a bacterial lung infection that was rendered as terminal. The 35-year-old orca lived for the next year in continued captivity before passing away in January 2017. As the star of Blackfish, Tillicum was responsible for spreading awareness regarding the poor treatment and unnatural diet whales in captivity have to endure. He was the first orca in SeaWorld history to grandfather future generations before his death, beating out the average lifespan of most whales held in captivity. When orcas are in their natural environment, they obtain water and keep themselves hydrated from the prey they hunt. However, in captivity, the whales don't have the opportunity to do that, and so SeaWorld stuffs the mammals with gelatin, a thickening substance that's obviously not healthy for them, just to keep them hydrated. Tillicum, for instance, before his sad death, would consume 83 pounds of gelatin alone on a daily basis when he weighed around 12,000 pounds. Number 2. SeaWorld San Diego Sighted by OSHA In April 2015, SeaWorld San Diego, one of the many SeaWorld parks internationally, was sighted by OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, four times, and giving the park a $25,770 fine as well. These citations are to mark the lack of protection for employees with the animals they're trained to be with, as well as criticizes their teaching methods of the trainers themselves. This is the root of the behavioral issue at the park, other than the obvious fact that these animals shouldn't be in captivity to begin with. After a lot of the ill treatment on behalf of SeaWorld came out, people were beginning to protest the park's motives and conglomerate type of handling. Just like humans wouldn't want their love interest to be forced on them, the orcas also don't want to be forced to breed. Apparently, the SeaWorld trainers would impose an unnatural breeding on the poor orcas who are used to choosing their own mates when at sea. Not only were they forced to breed, but also at a much younger age than they're supposed to, and with the same family members. Thankfully, after much criticism and objections, in March 2016, SeaWorld made an announcement they were stopping their horrible breeding acts. As a result of public outcry and empathy for the animals, three class action lawsuits were brought against the parks for fraud and manipulation. All three suits claimed that the parks consistently ensured their customers that the well-being of the orcas was their first priority and that they were well taken care of. <laughs> the public's choice to act on behalf of the mistreated orcas demonstrated a stance of solidarity and the lack of approval SeaWorld now receives. SeaWorld has been accused multiple times of their unfair prejudice hiring. 
According to allegations that were made against the park, over 1,000 of minority applicants, especially Hispanics and African Americans, were turned down just for their ethnicity. Besides being extremely discriminating, this is also problematic in the sense that there are no professional representatives for minority children who come to visit the park and want to have their own role models. That is just wrong and almost unbelievable to grasp in 2018. Number 1. SeaWorld's Orca Monopoly Globally, there are 58 orcas that live in captivity, and SeaWorld currently occupies at least 23 of them. The orcas work at the parks as performance animals and suffer as a result. The average lifespan of an orca in the wild is 30 to 50 years, but due to captivity and a life of trained performance requirements, SeaWorld's orcas have a lifespan of about 13 years. The generation of orcas performing at SeaWorld today are the last generation they plan to own. As we learned after the terrible injury Nakai sustained when fleeing a fight, orcas become aggressive and charge at one another when kept together in small spaces. The orcas are taken over by an overwhelming amount of stress and anxiety that produces an abnormal burst of anger. Consequently, they also bully the smaller marine mammals they're locked up with. Dolphins, for example, are far too commonly bit by upset orcas while in captivity. Social rules in the whale world dictate that violence is a no-no, but when held captive in tanks, they have nowhere to swim off to when they need to calm down and avoid physical outrage. To continue the orca generation within the SeaWorld family, the parks began artificially inseminating female whales at a surprisingly young age. The women would be inseminated, become pregnant, and after giving birth to their calves, were immediately separated from them. Taking a newborn calf away from its mother directly from the womb leads to mental health implications in the mothers, clearly. They experience a form of clinical depression, and their babies may live an unhealthy lifestyle without their parent around to raise them. Hope you enjoyed the video, Top Fivers. If you haven't already, check out our other channel, The Brilliant, to enjoy even more amazing list videos. Uh, there'll be a link in the description, so make sure you go check that out, as well as 